Welcome to the Rick Elves Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. And what do I mean about calmer waters ahead? I'm going to share a link down below. It's an interview of Barry Habib. And you've heard us mention him on this show before. And uh, he's quite the analyst when it comes to looking at the direction of uh, real estate or uh, mortgage rates. And lenders really weigh on his... Uh, on his analysis when it comes to forecasting rates. Now, as good as anybody can get at forecasting, there's always some surprises out there. Uh, but he laid out a pretty uh, good scenario I'm going to talk about in just a couple minutes. But first, I also want to warn you, be careful of the headlines too, because you've always heard me say that a uh, big percentage of a small number is still a small number. And you can look now today and you can see that down here, this red line being homes that went under contract over the past seven days has actually climbed up by about 20%. The new listings, not active listings, but new listings that are coming on the market is still declining. And I know that's hard to swallow because you're saying, yeah, but Rick, you're still saying there's almost 19,000 listings out there. That's because they're not selling because this number has plummeted so far. The difference between that, the number of contracts there are, and the number of new listings that are coming on, <clears throat> as that gap grows then list prices and sales prices come down. As that gap gets closer, prices level out, or if it gets where they're right on top of each other like they were just a few short months ago, then you know what happens. We see that rapid price acceleration. We're not seeing that right now. And the other thing that we're not seeing is we're not seeing, um, well, first of all, the, I mean, let's state the obvious here. Here's the sales for the, for the month. 5737 and um, we haven't been there in a long time as you can see all these other years here that's a really low number and that's for the month and for the month we're just not putting any homes we're putting homes out there but nobody's gobbling them up in May and in June particularly in June we had this wave of new listings at the market and we thought oh man here we go and it looks like the people that listed their homes were the ones that were probably going to list in August and September and they just pulled them forward because they were afraid about the uh, the rates hurting housing like it's doing right now. Remember, they got all the way up to over six. So everybody thought, oh my gosh, here we go. And they're hearing that the Fed's going to raise 50 basis points and 75 basis points. And this is the beginning of the end. We better get our home market now. So you had open door, offer pad, flippers people that own rentals that decided that they wanted to sell the rentals airbnbs they all listed them and they're all sitting there they're barely moving so we're seeing um kind of some stagnation happening right now and that stagnation is that our sales are remaining low and that wave of people that put their homes on the market have backed off so how long are we going to stay here that's anybody's guess so that's what we're going to keep looking at and then you look at the average sales price per square foot it came running right down and then it went up just a little bit it has before there's lots of up and ups and downs when you track average sales per square foot months of supply you can look at this chart and you can take it a couple ways and you can say man that thing shot up like a rocket it's literally off the charts well if you put it in perspective and you add 2007 and 2008 there we're still way down here so we have a long way to go to get into that panic zone and that uh, that bowl of soup. Canceled listings. These are going up quite a bit, actually. They were sitting around 470 in 2016. Now we're at 442. Uh, but there's kind of some mud in these numbers. There's a couple brokerages. One are those three-day people I keep talking about. For some reason, if you're a real estate agent out there, maybe you can help me with this. In bulk, they're taking all their listings and they're canceling them and then putting them right back on with a new multiple listing number. Why? It doesn't short their days on market. In fact, it actually hurts their contract ratio because it shows that they have all these listings that they had on that didn't sell. It, boom, gets baked into the numbers. I don't know what they're accomplishing. So if there's a trick out there, let me know. But when sales start to suddenly change like they are, you start seeing crazy things like that. And we're definitely seeing crazy things. Now, get back to this Barry Habib article that uh, this this YouTube video that I watched. 
And he's saying there's a possibility of calmer times ahead towards the end of the year or the first quarter of 2023. And believe it or not, 4% uh, mortgages. Now, he goes into a very long explanation how mortgage rates are more tied to inflation than they are the central bank's rate increases. You've already seen 275 point increases and rates have gone down. So I think you need to digest that first. If they have another one, that doesn't automatically mean that rates go up. The key to look at is inflation. And the inflation numbers um, are starting to improve. I don't know how long they're going to improve. So it could be a bumpy road this summer as we're going through looking at these numbers. One of the formulas that he shared on there was the price of oil and how the price of oil, um, how you can actually sit at home. I'll give you the formula here in a second on uh, looking at West Texas crude and looking at the chart and figuring out how much your price per gallon of gas is going to be. So you take the price of a gallon of gas or barrel of oil right now is sitting at $93. Then you multiply that times 1.5 because that's the cost of converting the oil to gasoline. Then you divide that by 42. That's how many gallons are in a, in a barrel of oil, 42 gallons. Then that gives you a gas price of $3.32 a gallon. Then you have to add about 20 to 25 percent on that for local taxes, federal taxes, fees, etc. So $93 a barrel, you end up with roughly $3.99 a gallon. So you can kind of mess around with that formula when if you want to get on and get a little wonky, get a little geeky and try to predict where gas prices are. And so if those numbers go up, if that West Texas crude goes up to $120 again, that'll put more upward pressure on mortgage rates. Now, the other elephant in the room is affordability. And we're seeing that adjustment on affordability right now. Because the interest rates went up so high, it really threw affordability in the toilet. And people are saying, I can't afford it. I just, I'm not even going to look for a house right now. I'm just going to wait for something to shake out. I'm either going to wait a year or I'm going to wait till it drops 25%. Everybody's got a timeline and everybody has a percentage. Everybody. The rest are saying, well, I think I can probably still get in the house. So I'm going to be in it for the long term. So I'm going to give it a shot. So you've got three camps there. Two are saying I'm out. And one says, I'm going to try and stay in. So affordability has to be solved by a combination of wage increases, which right now real wages are going up about 9%. If you take out the uh, entry-level fast food, high school kid, teenager wages, and look at actual real wages, they're up about 9%. Now, I'm no economist, so don't hold me to that, but that's what I'm reading. And with home prices starting to come down, there will be this kind of meet-in-the-middle moment that could be out there uh, as early as next year. And if we have mortgage rates about 4%, then you could see that real estate will hang in there and do just fine. You'll have price stabilization. Now, it's a theory. It's a theory that he's pushing forward. So there's a lot of headwinds that say that there's things that can come up that can knock this out of the water. And I'm sure you'll put that in the comment section. Rick, you're all wet. And uh, that's fine. I, I'm uh, trying to learn this just like you. But it'll affect those numbers that I showed you. It if there are changes, it will affect the rate of which new listings come on and how robust sales become again. Because right now, they're as low as they've ever been. Ask any realtor friend that you know if they have a listing. How many showings did you have this week? They might tell you one, none. I mean, it's really slow. And it's slow nationally. Those numbers are not just unique to Phoenix. It's same way in Nashville, Tennessee, same way in, if not worse, in Boise, Idaho, and uh, across the country. There's just no foot traffic. It really got bad, especially open house traffic, when oil and when gas prices got up to $5.50 a gallon. I mean, who's going to go out cruising around looking at homes? So I'm going to start watching this um, inflation number a little more closely now and, and uh, keeping track of that. And I'm going to watch and see if that low number that we have of weekly sales between 2,400 and 2,700 starts to budge. It's up this past week 
more of an anomaly than it is a trend. Uh, but again, watch the headlines because the headlines will tend to capture little things like that. Subtle things. Sales up 20%. Wow, holy cow. Well, a big percentage of a small number, my friends, is still a small number. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Take care.